You got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Celebrate friendship and beyond during the first ever Pixar Fest with the all new Pixar themed fireworks spectacular and your favorite park parades. Celebrate from April 13th through September 3rd only at Disneyland Resort. Visit Disneyland.com for details. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. You got a friend in me. Entertainment subject to change without notice. You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Life presents experiences that add layers to who we are and how we see the world, affecting how we communicate. Lydia is here to take apart the layers and create new ways to connect and build relationships. So now, please welcome the host of Layers of Communication, your core boss, Lydia Taggart. Hi, welcome to Layers of Communication. You're listening to BBM Global Network on TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I just can't even tell you how excited I am. This is my first show, and I I am a core boss expert on getting to the core, getting through all these layers. I'm going to tell you how I got to where I am. It started off about 12 years ago, a little more than 12 years ago, when I was having my quadruplets. I already had two boys, and my oldest was four years old. So I had six kids all within four years, and this was like super crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. And I had to figure out how to connect and communicate with all my kids but also with all the people coming in to help us, how to organize, who was doing what, which diaper needed to be changed, and it's just crazy. Well, over the years, I have learned we are so unique. When we're, we're born, we are set up in our own way. Having four kids born at the same time, in the same place, within the same minute, in the same home, they are so incredibly different. And that's the way we are. We're all individuals and we have all these different layers to who we are. These experiences change how we interact with people. So I was at a place where I became a mom, right? And I was just a mom. I had this super massive take care of the kids kind of business and I lost all of the rest of me. I forgot that I had all these other parts of who I am and I became just the mom. When we lose ourselves into one of our layers, then we have a hard time relating to other people in the other layers. Like if I was in my just a mom mode, then I would have a hard time communicating with someone who didn't have kids or who had only one kid. There's this big gap because we can't relate when we're stuck in one of our layers. But there's a lot more to us than that. You know, I'm not just a mom. I'm a daughter. I'm a friend. I'm a wife. I'm a sister. I'm a neighbor. I'm a worker. I'm a business owner. I'm an ice cream lover. We have all these different parts to us. And, you know, I can relate to a lot of people who like ice cream, but not everybody likes ice cream. What if somebody only likes chocolate and somebody loves vanilla and hates chocolate? You know, there's different parts to us that we can relate to. And when we had our quadruplets, my oldest son was diagnosed with um, Asperger's as high functioning autism. And what happened was everybody was so crazy and he needed stability and structure. And it was kind of hard to have that 
when you're having four babies introduced to your family. And he was only four years old. So he didn't know how to handle that. And he stopped talking, just completely stopped talking. I remember the, the day that I took him to the grocery store because our doctor had said, you just need more time with him, right? Good luck. And then he laughed and sent us on our way. So I took him to the grocery store and we're walking down the aisle and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to let him choose his own cereal. What kind of cereal would you like today? And he pointed and said, meow. Okay. Well, ice cream. Ice cream gets everybody, right? Let's go get some ice cream. What flavor of ice cream would you like? And he did the same thing. He pointed and meowed again. And I thought, there has got to be a way to get to him, to communicate. There's got to be a way that we can communicate with everybody. This is so central to who we are and how we function in the world. We need to communicate. And over the years, we did that. He's now, he just got his Eagle Award in the Boy Scouts yesterday. We had his court of honor. I was so excited. He stood up in front of a crowd of people. It wasn't a large crowd, but it was definitely a crowd. And he, he talked in front of everybody and he was comfortable with it enough to get his, to do it. And so this has come from many, many years of practice and the hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is one of the steps that I really first found when Stephen, my son, was trying, we wanted him to talk and interact with people but he wouldn't. And on the hierarchy of needs, these are some of the layers of how it works. You have your base layer at the center. That's the core, right? What do you really need at the center? And then there's accomplishments are way up at the top. And I wanted him to be accomplished, but there's other steps in between that we were skipping. He didn't feel safe enough. His world was in chaos. And so when I figured this out, we were able to go through the layers in the appropriate manner and say, okay, he needs to feel safe and he needs to have structure and he needs to feel like he belongs and he has worth. And then he can go out and accomplish this communication and experience life in the way that is meant to be connecting with people. And he's 16 now, so it, it wasn't a quick, easy fix but it builds and builds and builds. So back to when I was just a mom and I forgot who I was. So that's a great accomplishment, having my son be able to talk to people, but it's not my accomplishment. It's his accomplishment. And do we base our, our success on what other people do? Sometimes we do. And that's one of those layers that we look through and we, we frame our world through the layers that we pile on top of us. All of our experiences frame how we see the world. And sometimes we base our worth on what other people are doing as part of our identity and layers that if I were just a banker, and I know someone who is identified as a banker, because that was his job. Well, one day he lost his job and he didn't know who he was anymore because he was only a banker. He had to go and find that he was also a man, a father, a son, and all these other parts to him that he was not just a banker. And I had to find that I was not just a mom. And I bet you've got something that you could benefit from finding that you're not just fill in that blank there. There's more to you. You have an amazing power and so much good in you. You are talented and you can change the world. There's more to you than just whatever. You, you have more layers among you. And, you know, I sat yesterday at church we go to church all the time because I've received quite a few miracles and I would I feel like if I don't go to church I would start not having as many miracles and I love miracles I have quadruplets there's no doubt that miracles happen so we've take up a whole bench at church but yesterday 
they were called up because now they're 12 years old. They're called up in front of the congregation to be recognized for their birthday and they're graduating into the next um, the next program for the youth instead of the, the children. They're moving on. And I sat there by myself on the bench and I realized there is so much more. If I hadn't found who I am that's not just a mom, what would I do when I'm sitting there by myself? Okay, we're going to go to a break and we'll be back soon. So, so don't go too far. This is BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Lydia Taggart, your host for Layers of Communication. Stay close. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back to Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and we're listening on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So before the break, I was talking with you about being all alone and having more layers to who we are so that when we're find our, finding ourselves all alone, we aren't struck with not knowing what to do because we're just all alone and we don't know who we are because we're out of that layer of identity. So I want to talk to you more about these layers. There's all sorts of layers that make us up, that make up who we are. There's love languages, there's learning styles, there's body language, there's all these different experiences of life that influence how we interact with other people. If we have a story about money, that money is bad, then we're going to interact with millionaires in a different way than if we say money is great and a great tool to, to bring good around the world. And so that's just one example. There's a lot of myths about these layers. One of the myths is when you're communicating, you just have to work on the words you're using or the tone that you're using to say those words. And there's so many other things that we we see and how we how we pull in this information to understand and communicate like body language like um and i've learned this from watching my son with his autism that he doesn't he didn't catch on to the the little hints and the nuances about the, everything was black and white it was either you said this how could that mean that sarcasm sarcasm is just beyond his his imagination is not going to sarcasm. He understands a lot more now because we've been practicing. But um, this influences workplace interactions as well. And we don't think about it at work as often as we do about it in families. We think it's just about parents and kids or I'm an adult so I know better. 
but really it's what we've been trained with all along and it's how we interact for the rest of our lives. It can change as we learn and develop different techniques and things we can implement and change. We're never, ever too old to try something new. So um, I'll share a story about the love languages. If you're not familiar with love languages, it's the idea that each person has one or maybe two languages that we really relate with that will feel hungry and starved if we don't get fed this particular type of showing love. And there's five of them that are commonly discussed. It's touch, words of affirmation, service, time, and, okay, we got service, touch, time, words, and gifts. I always forget gifts because it's the one that's hardest for me. Um, I remember one time, my husband, my poor husband, he's such a good man. He would say for a long time, what can I get you for Valentine's Day? And I would say, well, you better not get me flowers because they just die and that's a waste of money. And you better not get me chocolate because that's going to make me fat. And what do you think? I need to be fat? Or you better not. Everything was a you better not. And he had no idea how to help me and what to show his love, what way to show his love to me. And so, you know, I since looked at that and went, that was probably not the most loving way to love my husband, to tell him, don't show me your love. But um, when we found out about these love languages, we started studying it and seeing how could this work in our relationship. And if you think about this in your own life, how could these relationships be affected by love languages and what you expect them to have as their love language? So when we had our quadruplets, we had a need, a real big need that other people would do stuff for me. And my husband took on the task of doing dishes all the time. He didn't like, uh, sometimes if the dishes were in a different order, you know, they can um, not get as clean in the dishwasher if they're in a different order. And so he took on doing the dishes all the time and that's always been his thing. And I would do the laundry. And when he was doing the dishes, I would think, oh, wow, he loves to serve. That's his love language because that's the way he's speaking. And so then I would find ways to serve him. And he would say, oh, she really likes it when I do the dishes. I'm going to do the dishes more often. And we had this, this cycle of service and showing love in service. But when we took the quiz, we actually found out neither one of us Neither one of us spoke service as our primary love language. It was just one of the layers, but it wasn't the one at the core. So all of the love languages, all of these languages are in every one of us. But which one is at the center? Which one's at the core? That's, that's the question. And so the theory is, if you speak all of the languages, if you stack them and layer them, then it doesn't matter which language they're speaking is their primary language because you've touched all of them. So you're going to get to the core. You don't have to figure out which one is their primary language and it really helps. But if you're not leaving any of the languages out, then you're going to get to the core. And so when we found out that we neither one of us were speaking the right language, and that was the only way we were trying to show love to each other was through service, because he expected that I was appreciating that so much that that must be what I really needed. And I was thinking that was how he was speaking, so that must be what he really needed, but it wasn't. So this is a myth that when you have just one language or one type of learning or one experience that you're dealing with, there's not just one part. It's not just one thing. There are lots of layers and there's so many different ways to do this. So um, I'll give you some tips on how to do this with the love languages. Are you ready? So there's words of affirmation. Time is everywhere. 
there's no way of getting around time. Time like wraps everything up all into one piece. You can't do something without using time. But the difference is the quality of time. If you focus on that person, if you focus your efforts and your energy and your love onto who you're trying to connect with or understand, even at a workplace, if you're if you're working with a coworker or a boss or an employee and you're trying to understand them, it's not going to work if you're on your phone messaging or if you're looking at Facebook at the same time and going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're going to miss pieces. It, the way to make time count is to focus on what you want to accomplish, which in this case would be connecting to the other person. So you focus on that person. You don't have the distractions of time and whatever else, interacting with your phone and just, you know, checking the to-do list in your mind or the grocery list or thinking about what you're going to do in the future. All these different things are distractions. Even if you're not on your phone messaging or doing other things on your, I I shouldn't just limit it to the phone, your electronic device. If you're not having an electronic device in your hand, that's great. That's step one. But you got to bring your mind into focus too. You can't be thinking about other things. You got to focus for that moment on who you're interacting with. We talk about it directly to the person. Then you have a compliment, words of affirmation. I appreciate you. You did a great job. You look great today. Any of these kinds of things you Find something to compliment them on. One of my favorites is, I'm so glad you're on time today. I I have that one in top of my things because my mother has such an issue with time and it's just kind of one of my layers I see through. So when we get back from this break, we'll talk more about how to layer these love languages and make an impact on every relationship that you interact with. And you're listening to Layers of Communication on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and we will be right back. Stay close. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and you're listening on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. Before the break, we were talking about layering our techniques, in particular with love languages. We talked about time and how to focus your time and make that quality time so we can get through the layer of time. Now, there's also on my website at LydiaTaggart.com, I have a free um, ebook for you about creating more time. So you can go there and download that for free. So we've got time as one of the love languages and we've gone over that how you focus. And we've started on words of affirmation. You find something to compliment the person on, anything. Now, if you know one of their layers, such as time, if time has been an issue, like it has for my family, If you can find a compliment for those words of affirmation that will work on that layer, if you can say, I'm so glad you showed up on time, look, great job, you did it on time, that will cut through another layer that resistance is often there. If you can find something to compliment them on on, um, a relevant layer that's theirs, then you'll get through extra 
not just the five love languages layers, but also an experience life, kind of a life language. So we've got words of affirmation. You find a compliment, you focus your time, and then you anchor it into them. This is the layer of love language of touch, where you just touch them. You touch them on the shoulder, on the elbow, on on the, um, what's this part? The forearm. <laughs> you squeeze their hand, pat them on the back, whatever it is. You find somewhere to touch them. And it doesn't have to be weird and romantic or, I mean, you, you can touch anybody anytime. You're just a quick pat on the shoulder. Even the people who think that they don't like to be touched, touch is vital. It is really vital. And they did studies. Um, I believe it was in the 70s with monkeys and they they took them away from their mothers and the idea was to see how they would interact and survive without being touched and cuddled by their mothers and so they set up this um, pretend monkey of just wires and they hooked up a bottle And this is so relevant to me in my life because I had to bottle feed all my babies and I couldn't hold them all at the same time. And I I had people come in and help hold them. Anyway, the monkeys were set up with a bottle and a, a wire kind of configuration that looked the shape of a mother, but it wasn't soft or anything. Those baby monkeys did not do well. They set up another monkey figure thing and they wrapped some soft cloth around it. Those babies felt more cuddled and more loved and they did so much better. Oh my goodness. It is just drastic. People need to be touched. Every creature benefits from touch. If we've got a layer of resistance built up around us that we don't want to be touched, we've had some sort of experience in our past that has pushed people away, has then told us in our subconscious that being touched is bad or dangerous or scary or whatever it can be. It's okay to be touched. We need to be touched. And it's okay to just do a quick pat on the shoulder or you know, there, be creative. Think of what you want to figure out in your own situation. Touch is vital. When our kids were in the hospital, you know, they were all born premature and they started coming home and they came home one at a time. So we had one of our babies left in the hospital by himself. Everyone was so so thriving and doing great. And then he was left alone in the hospital. The nurses were still there. Everything was still great. We still had tons of help coming in and helping us organize and take care of our kids. But he was alone a lot more than he was used to. And I couldn't get to the hospital near as often as I wanted to. Now everybody was home and I couldn't split my time fairly enough. And it got to the point fairly quickly that all the nurses and doctors that were there said, you know what, you need to take him home. I know he's not really ready to go home by the standards that we've set, but he needs to be home because he's not thriving anymore. And so we learned how to use an oxygen machine and he had these little tubes in his nose and we taped him on his cheeks so he could breathe and we took him home. And would you believe When he got home and he was with all the people again, with people who loved him and could spend time holding him, he started thriving again. He progressed so much more. It's so important to have people touch and show their affection and love, even if it's just a simple little pat on the shoulder. Anchor in that compliment and show them that you have noticed them, that you recognize them and you see them is so vital. Okay. So what's the next layer? We've got time, words of affirmation, touch, service, and gifts. Gifts is really hard because you don't want to be giving a gift every time that you see somebody. 
that that can get kind of pricey and cluttery. And really, I think at a point, we don't understand the layer of gifts very well because it's not just giving something. There's a lot of lot of families out there and people who think you're going to be able to buy your love. And this is where that phrase comes from, I believe, that you can't buy love because it's more than just giving stuff. After a while, all the stuff kind of starts feeling like junk. And we're going to talk more about the layer of gifts and how important it is to to show love through giving gifts and what the difference is after we get back from this break. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, for the Layers of Communication. You're listening on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay close. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together, we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back to Layers of Communication. You're listening to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. And I'd like to invite you, if you feel like calling in, you're welcome to. We'd love to have you call in. The number is 866-451-1451. And that number is 866-451-1451. All right, before the break, we were talking about the gifts the love language gifts, and how to layer that. What is the difference between just getting a whole bunch of stuff and speaking the love language of gifts? Now, this is this is complicated, and this is the one that I told you before. I've had the hardest time understanding this language of gifts because it does feel like you can't buy love, and you can't just give stuff and expect people to like you in return. It's not genuine, Right. But the love language of gifts is so, so drastically different. You just, it's not just stuff. It's the time and effort put into it. It's the thinking about what would that person really appreciate? Is there anything that this person needs that I could help provide? Is there anything at all that I can help them with? This is the love language of gifts, so focused in on the person. You know, I've gone from thinking it was the worst language and maybe it shouldn't be a language at all to considering it might be the most powerful love language of all if it's used appropriately and because it wraps up everything else. It's all of the other love languages thinking about the time and the person, their needs, and and all the other layers, considering the person's layers of what makes that person up. So if you're able to, 
to really find a way to use the love language of gifts, it would cut through all the layers really, really well, unless they're hard like I used to be. Saying, don't get me roses, don't get me, <laughs> don't get me chocolate. And oh, my husband would say, Well, I thought you liked chocolate. And I was like, I do, I love chocolate. I especially love that one that you're trying to give me, but I don't want that because that's not showing me that you love me. That's showing me that I get to eat. <laughs> anyway, we have these confused la- love languages. Um, so if you're able to find something that truly touches a person's needs and you're showing compassion for them, you're showing that you're thinking of them, uh, a person who really speaks the love language of gifts remembers birthdays. They remember anniversaries. They celebrate holidays in a completely different way than someone who is just words of affirmation and not into the gifts. It's amazing to consider this on a different level. Okay, so the last one, we've got time and focus. Service. Did we talk about service? Yes, we did. And we talked about anchoring and touch. And we've talked about gifts. Which one have we not talked about? Well, I'm not going to overwhelm you. That's enough to work on for now. If you want to go into more details, then you can. we can talk more details. But I want to share more about getting through these layers, all these different layers. And I told you about my husband doing the dishes all the time. He still does the dishes all the time. It's still a service-oriented home. But now that we've thought of all these other languages, it is so much more exciting and happy in our home. And our kids are happier to be at home with us. Not that they were ever unhappy necessarily. They're pretty young still. But when you have more variety in your expressing of of your love languages, more variety in the way that you communicate, there's, there's a draw there that's exciting and curious that you can find, you know, what's going to happen today? Is mom going to do something crazy today? Is it going to be funny? Is it going to be sad? How is it going to touch me today? And when we, when we interact with people, we can think of more of the outcome. How do we want this relationship to end up? More than just how is it affecting me and how do I feel right now? This is that time piece again. If you can look forward just a little bit and say, if I do this, what's it going to be like tomorrow? If I do that, what's it going to be like next week? And goals and dreams, all these different things really hinge on how we interact and communicate with the people in our lives. And there was, um, <laughs> my, my grandma had birds. And we have birds in our house. My, my kids have some allergies to cats and dogs. So uh, they were never... They're never able to have a pet. And one day, one of my kids came and said, what about chickens? What about chickens? We have chickens. And I checked the allergy list. And I said, well, nobody's allergic to feathers. So we got some birds and these chickens. And we also have a parakeet. And wouldn't you know, we named the bird in the house, the parakeet. His name is Feathers. And... These birds are just amazing. If you haven't had a pet, this is another layer of who we are interacting with animals. And I thought, these animals, they can be just as fun as a cat or a dog. My my oldest son would go out and he would pet them. And he'd ride on the swing set with them on his lap. And they were just best friends, just like a dog might be. But anyway, this feathers bird has been trained to catcall when the door opens. (whistles) Kind of like that. And so I'm not the best whistler. But that is one of the layers in my life. And I remember my grandma had these birds. And she would fly, let them fly around the house. And 
yesterday, my mom brought a gift for my oldest son, who's who's the chicken lover. And it's this pictures of a bird. And my grandma gave him a book about birds. And if you know one of these passions, these layers, and you can give a gift that's related to one of their layers of passion, or they're super interested in, uh, he, there's all these different things that go to who we are. And if you can find part of who we are and connect it to something else of how we interact, it's it just, oh, we've got these. Okay, so these uh, pictures of the birds were actually my great grandfathers and we don't I don't know where he got them from but they're really old and it just it pulls the generations together and that's another layer too is your family history and your generations so when we get back from this break we'll talk more about the generations and how our history can influence where we are going I'm Lydia Taggart, your host for Layers of Communication on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay close. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Welcome back. You're on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. Before the break, we were talking about generations and the layers of influence from our past history and our families. So my son was given this picture of uh, their birds, and they're made out of feathers. And they're beautiful. They're really old. They're at least 60 years old. But it, His story with those pictures is completely different from my aunt's story. My aunt had one of the birds that was flying around in the house when she was a kid, a teenager, I would guess. At grandma's house, this bird flew into the mirror and died right in front of her. That is a completely different relationship with birds than my son, who is sitting on the swing set and petting and loving his chickens. So these pictures mean something completely different to the two people. If we know what some of our stories are in relation to other things like birds or sports or money or there's everything that you can think of, we have a story with it. So I'm so excited to be able to have this radio program and, and interview people in all the different relationship la- layers and how they relate to communicating with people. If we can understand where people are coming from, 
it makes a huge difference. Those pictures are a great gift for my son. Something about a bird would not be a great gift for my aunt. She did not enjoy that experience of the bird flying into the mirror in front of her. But um, yeah, we have other layers. My, my daughter has dyslexia and it's a different way of learning. And she went from asking Santa Claus to make her smarter one year to being so confident. Oh my word, she's so confident in who she is now because we were able to work on these layers this last week. Oh, it tears me up because I'm so proud of her. She went and told the teacher that she was not going to do an assignment because she disagreed with it. She didn't think she she's not just not going to do this assignment. And what would you think this assignment is? It is so profound that her sweet little mind, her innocence, and her pure just love for people, it was an argumentative assignment. And she was supposed to write a paper and argue her point of view. And she went to the teacher and said, I'm not going to do this because arguing is bad. It causes stress and it's unhealthy and I'm not going to do it. Well, she didn't realize that she was arguing her point right there. But how brave can you get coming from where she was so many so many years ago that wasn't really all that long ago but in her life it was a long time ago she was asking santa claus to make her smarter she had zero confidence she would be sick literally sick and not want to go to school until one day i told her if you will go to school then i will homeschool you next year and you won't ever have to worry about this again but she had been sick throwing up, just can't get out of bed because her belly hurt too bad, literally making herself sick. In the two seconds after I told her that I would not make her go to school anymore, that we would homeschool her, all of her symptoms went away and she was just a healthy, happy girl. And she went to school and she didn't complain about it at all. And it was only a month or so left of school. But that was super important for her to be recognized and acknowledged for what she needed, what she wanted. And then we homeschooled her and figured out that she had dyslexia. We didn't even know that. That's one of her layers. She learns differently. And I remember going into a fast food place. We were going for lunch one day and somebody asked her why she wasn't at school. And she said, well, my teacher just didn't understand how my brain worked, so I'm homeschooled now. And that's all it is. We just don't understand. We need to figure out how people are working. We need to figure out how to build each other up and fill in what is needed on their core needs. In her schooling, there is nothing that matters more than being able to read. You can look up math. You can look up anything but if you don't know how to read, then you're out of luck. That's so core to her success. So we took her home and we taught her how to read and we figured out all the things that she needed. And then the next thing she needed, interacting, having friends, connecting and communicating with other people. That is so vital to our success and our confidence and our being able to live in, in the world. So she's back at school. She's been there for a couple of years now. And she is so confident in her abilities. She is in the class with the gifted learners. And she's not one of the gifted learners by any means. But she is in the same kind of reading groups. She, last year, she was being pulled out of her class to go read with a higher level reading group. And I just think that is super amazing. It's one of my favorite success stories. And I can't wait for my next one is that I'm looking forward to sharing is my son being 16 now. He is ready to enter the work field, the workforce, and interacting and communicating with bosses and other coworkers. I'm super excited for him to be able to bring all the things that he's known and learned in this layering technique, bring that into the workforce, and change the way employment is communicating. And 
it it's just oh, I'm so excited about that. So, have you had any success in your relationships? Any at all? I'm sure you have. One of the other myths that we have about relationships is that you have to have success all the time. And we really don't. The thing is, we get confused and stuck on this idea that something bad happened, something was missing, or they don't speak my love language. We get stuck on one thing like that, and then we don't allow all the other awesome things to show up and be grateful for them. Oh, gratitude is such a great layer. Gratitude is like time. It cuts through every layer. If you can show gratitude, oh, magic happens. It just literally turns into magic in your relationships if you can show gratitude. Sincere, genuine gratitude changes the world. They say love makes the world go round. It's really gratitude because you can't be grateful without showing love. And oh, you just got to show your gratitude for every little thing, that any little thing. Little things build up by small, simple things. Great things are brought to pass. So it's time for us to take another break and stay close. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. You're listening to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio on layers of communication and stay close. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back to Layers of Communication. This is BBM Global Network on TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. Just before the break, we were talking about confidence and the layers that we have in our confidence. I want to remind you that there are so many layers to get through. Don't get frustrated when you're stuck in a layer or if you, someone is only willing to share one of their layers of identity with you. Don't worry. We can do this. We can get through it. You just work on that gratitude and show them the gratitude and keep finding new things to be grateful for. It changes the world. It really does. The world revolves on gratitude not just love, because love is gratitude. So these layers, if we're thinking about the layers, what layer are you stuck in? Are you just a mom? Are you just an employee? Are you just anything? I hope that today you can explore that a little bit more and and find more things that you're good at, more qualities and talents and gifts that you have not just for yourself, but to offer the world, because you are an important part of this world. And I'm so glad that you get to be here with me. 
If you want to look up Maslow's hierarchy of needs and see where you're falling, maybe you're like my son was when we're trying to get a goal, but we're not filling in these other supportive layers to help him get to that goal. Maybe there's more love languages that you haven't explored yet. Maybe you're not just in the service like my husband and I were were experiencing. And maybe there's some other learning style that you haven't explored that is influencing the way you see the world. Well, maybe, maybe you've got a lot more in you than you thought. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you see your greatness and help you find your happiness. And I am super excited to share these things with you. We're almost out of time, but today I want you to try that layering technique for the love languages. Try focusing your time and finding some sort of compliment, a genuine compliment that you can share with the person. Anchor that in and touch them. Touch them somehow in some way. Make it a part of who we are. We're all connected and we can help build each other up and build these relationships to change the world. You can find me on LydiaTaggart.com. I really appreciate any kind of interaction you want to share with me. Comments if you have a topic you want to discuss or a layer that you want to discuss. I have mentoring programs on LydiaTaggart.com. You can sign up for an appointment with me. Please go download your book. It's Time Enough, How to Create More. And that is the layer that we need to work on, time. Next week, we're going to have a specialist of time, Amanda White. I'm super excited to have her on our show. She's going to talk to us about time and how it interacts, how our interaction with time affects our communication and our relationships with others. So make sure you come again next week. I'm super excited to be here every Monday at noon Eastern time on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. Thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you again next time. And make sure you make these relationships count because you're worth it and so are they. See you next time. You've been listening to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Tune in next week as we break through the layers in order to communicate and connect down to your core on Lydia Taggart's Layers of Communication. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.